think it's hard to convince people right now in our current political situation that they should get involved because there aren't a lot of opportunities to get involved in a way that will make a difference. You have to sacrifice a lot of your time and really push yourself into a party or, or an organization to reach a point of influence. Uh, political parties especially aren't thinking, they're not thinking long term, they're thinking about how to attract, they'll do polling for example and all this analysis and it's just about how to maximize our vote now not how to attract a new generation of young people who are so excited that they'll be future candidates. And that's why we don't have good candidates, because we're not reaching out to those people who are, with the parties, especially under a first-past-the-post system, water down all their messages so as to not alienate any particular demographic. But if you've watered everything down to that extent, then you're not saying anything exciting, and you're not attracting anyone to actually, with passion, work for the party. So right now, in city elections, it's winner take all and only one counting of the ballot. So whoever gets the most in the first ballot wins, even if they only got, let's say, 35, 40%. One councillor even got 20%. Now, 80% didn't vote for that council, and they won. Uh, in fact, almost a quarter of our current council uh, are in seats where most of their constituents said, no, we don't want you back. But because their opposition was split three or four ways, they get in anyways. With the ranked ballot, they wouldn't get in. So we'd see more turnover, more new faces, and those new faces would be less likely to be white men. And right now, council is very um, monolithic in that sense. I think, I think when you have a democratic system that functions properly, and an, an electoral system that functions properly, then the council that's elected will automatically reflect the diversity of the population. And when I organized the City Idol project, we proved that. So we did, there was no manipulation, there was no quotas, there was no affirmative action. We just had this really open process that was inclusive and inviting. And we ended up with our four winners, and essentially they were competing like American Idol, but they were competing to be a political leader. Uh, our four winners were incredibly diverse and reflected Toronto. I would, okay, for people who are thinking of getting engaged, I would um, encourage them to definitely try it and try and get involved with something local, something winnable, something tangible, mm -hmm. and be very bold and courageous. Ask for meetings with people who you think might not meet with you. Go right to the top. Sit with your city councilor. That's their job. Mm -hmm. right? If you think something should be different in your neighborhood, talk to the people who can change it. Talk to the people who you think might also want to change. Organize them into groups. Always serve juice and cookies. Make the environment social. Make the environments fun. If you're expecting people to take time out of their day to help you with your cause, they better have a good time doing it. Because mm -hmm. they're taking time away from their family, from their hobbies, from their own chores, etc. And they've already had a long, hard day at work. So if you're going to create an environment where there's going to be conflict and tension and people fighting and ego, you're going to have a trouble building a movement. Mm -hmm. So you have to make it fun. You have to keep people inspired and optimistic that there's an achievable goal. Um, but if people really want to work towards significant change, if people who are like, folks like me and you perhaps who are constantly aware of the urgency of what's happening environmentally, the injustice of certain elements of the economy. Um, I'd say put all your efforts into electoral reform because the system is rigged against us and it's not an effective use of your time to try and organize within a system um, where you're going to hit a brick wall. So in terms of what people can do right now to change our electoral system, which to me is issue number one, it's ground zero, uh, is BC. There's a referendum on May 12th. It'll be the first jurisdiction in Canada to have proportional representation if it wins. And I like to see that as the first domino. So if we get BC, the other provinces will follow. If we lose BC, it'll be the fourth loss and the issue could be dead for a generation. So call your friends in BC, call your family, tell them to talk to their friends, spread the word, visit the website stv.ca and see what you can do to make a difference.